Hello once again, my friends. I welcome you to another video, and I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a great weekend. And I'd like to welcome you to another model kit video. Well, this is a historic model kit. Now, recently I did the history. I produced the video, the history of the Memphis Bell for you guys. And a lot of interesting facts about this wonderful plane. Well, today, incidentally, today is May 16th. And tomorrow is May 17th. The significance of that is that the crew completed their 25th assignment on the 17th of May, thus completing their obligation to their tour of duty. And the Memphis Belle herself completed her 25th mission two days later on the 19th. And you may not know that the crew members served on different bombers during their different assignments. In fact, the crew finished their assignments in their 25th um, mission on a different bomber. And the Memphis Bell herself, when she finished her 25th mission, she had a totally different crew. Um, just a little bit of tidbit, a little bit of information for you guys. But what I want to show you guys today is a model by Ravel of this absolutely spectacular airplane. This is the Memphis Bell. America's most famous bomber. You see the uh, you can see the great illustration, absolutely beautiful artwork on the cover of this box. You can see the nose art. Memphis Bell, of course, named after the pilot's sweetheart, a fiance. And the original nose art was painted on in Bangor, Maine, just before they left the United States for their service tour. And you can see each of the four 1,200 horsepower motors. And this is kit number 04297. You can see the measurements of the kit, 49.4 centimeters by 65.6 .6 centimeters. And this is in 148th scale by Ravel. You can see the other bombers. Each individual bomber and for one mission is referred to as a sortie. So let's see, there's one, two, there's three sorties in this illustration. And you can see the, looks like a German Messerschmitt. You can see a couple over there. And they used to call these planes the Flying Fortresses because you can see they do have a lot of air power, a lot of firepower. They had added the nose, um, the guns in the nose later because that was kind of a weak spot. Okay, that's the front of the box, and this is going to be an absolutely spectacular model. So let me show you guys the side of the box real quick. And I'm not sure what this is. I, I want to say it's the colors, but I don't know. Let's look for the English uh, version. Structural details on surface. Cockpit with instrument panel. Bomb sight and seat, rotating MG turret, movable MG ball turret under the fuselage, MG mounted inside windows, detailed main undercarriage, movable propeller, bombs on external pylons, decals for Memphis Bell and other U.S. Air Force versions. Let's take a look at some of the finished model pictures. You can see the landing gear. You can see a propeller. The top gun turret. This, this model is going to be so much fun. And the tail gun sit uh, position. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at it. Well, since we got it, the back of the box, usually they have like 
more pictures, but they don't have like that on this one. Uh, let's see. All Ravel model kits are divided into five categories. The skills making it easier for you to select the right model. One is the easiest and five is the most difficult. And we'll take a look and see which one this is in a moment. This one is five, so this one is difficult. B17F, the Memphis Bell, 148 scale, kit 04297, skill level five. And again, we get that absolutely gorgeous illustration. And I believe both ends of the box are the same. Actually, they're a little bit different uh, positioning. But basically the same information. Okay, what's on the other side of the box? Looks like we have a little bit more information. An unassembled plastic model kit, paint and cement are not included. Needed to complete a model as shown, 148 scale. And you have different languages. A little bit of information on a plane herself. During World War II, the Boeing B-17 was the breakthrough, heavily armed strategic bomber. Although with a total build of 12,677, it was far from the most numerous plane of its type. It kept the name Flying Fortress that it received from an American journalist at the time on the first flight of the Boeing B-17F was the first mass-produced mass -produced Flying Fortress. The most famous plane of the series was the B-17F-10BO, made by Boeing, which was the 15th July 1942. It was delivered and put into service with 324 bomb squadron. 91 Bomber Group of Basingbourne, England. The crew gave it the nickname Memphis Bell after the lady friend of the pilot, Lieutenant Robert K. Morgan. Its fame resulted from the fact that it was officially the first U.S. Army Air Force bomber in Europe to survive 25 missions. And it was made the star of Hollywood propaganda film. After this mission, the Memphis Bell and its crew were ordered back to the U.S. Later, it was brought back to the city of Memphis and set up a memorial in the open air. In 2004, the B-17F underwent a complete restoration. Today, the Memphis Bell is again accessible to the public. And of course, she's sitting in the Air Force Museum. So, that's everything on the outside of the box. Information about the model. So why don't we go ahead and take it over to the desk and I'll show you this fantastic model kit for this beautiful lady. All right, let's take a look inside this beautiful, beautiful box. And again, like with Revel, they don't have uh, shrink wrapping, but they have these kind of circles of tape that keep the box closed. By the way, for this build, I got the special paint. We're gonna have the, the browns. Uh, we got the different kind of greens. And this should be really fun. I thought this would be a good starting point when it comes to this model kit build. So let's get the box open. And look at all this yummy stuff. Love it. Now, <clears throat> it's modeled in green. Actually, let's do the, the instructions first. Let's see, we've got the warranty information, safety guidelines. If you want, you can pause and check that out. It's the same information, it's in, just in different languages. All right. So while we got them right here, let's show you guys the decals.
Look at that. That was beautiful. Got her serial number, 124485. You can see the stars for the wings. We got some of the smaller. I hope the camera can pick this up. The smaller decals that are going to go on. And it looks like it gives you the option of doing another bomber, the Meat Hound. And look, you can see the instrument panel. Hopefully the camera picks that up. I'll put up pictures of it and I'll zoom in. You can see the, the lady. These were paintings from Esquire magazine, a pinup, and they were painted by an artist named Petty. I believe his name was George Petty. And he would do the um, the pinouts for Esquire magazine. And they had one, I think, on the the starboard side, she was in red, and on the port side, she was in blue. And I'm sorry, I don't know if that's what it's referred to on a plane, port and starboard, but that's why they're in two different uh, swimsuits. And you can see the other decals. And you can see the, the bombing missions. That was the amount of, every time they went on a mission, they would um, stencil the bomb onto the side of the plane until they had gotten to 25. And I guess this is the serial number for the Meat Hound, another B-17 bomber. You got the 229524. You can see it's the same kind of wording, I believe that's on the side of the plane. Like I said, when I put the pictures up, um, I'll have zoomed in, so hopefully we can read all this stuff. But there are a lot of decals. All right, let's check out the instructions. And you can see they got that same illustration, but it's in black and white. Now, I don't know if this is the same that's on the side of the box. During the Second World War, the Boeing B-17 became synonymous with the heavily armed strategic bomber, even though a total of 12,677 were made. Yeah, this is the same thing that I read you earlier on the side of the box. You can see the technical weight. We've got the wingspan of 103 feet, 9 inches. The length was 74 feet, 9 inches and she was 19 feet one inch high and she was powered by four Wright Cyclone R1820-97 engines and they were 1200 horsepower emergency power rating of 1380 and you can see the maximum takeoff weight 65,012 pounds isn't that amazing how something that heavy can fly it's it's like some of the aircraft carriers that just weigh so much. It you, makes you wonder how anything that heavy can float on water. Okay, going into this, you read this before you begin. Um, you know, safety information. Um, you know, things like say um, little tips for painting and cutting off the model pieces off the tree. And then we have the little keys. To glue, not to glue, um, something with a knife. So it shows you what you are going to need to do, the little keys, the tape. And we got the safety advice on the bottom. This must be an older kit because it doesn't have the kind of colored book that the, a lot of the newer ones have. You can see here's the color key. going to be fun. And it looks like we have the parts list right here. You can see all the wings or the halves to each wing. And we got the fuselage down there. And I'm thinking that these are clear parts. You can see the window, the windshield. Of course we have the propellers. 
And it looks like we go right into it below that. Step one, you can see the formation of the flight deck. Remember, this is the first plane to feature um, where they don't have an open cockpit. It's actually a flight deck. So I don't know if that's where the bombardier is going to sit with the nose. You can see the formation of the seat. And it looks like the pilots, the pilot and the co-pilot seats. And we get to the control panel. I don't know what you guys think. I hope we're able to even attempt to light this. That would be really cool. But we'll see. All right, step five, we get the formation of the control panel to the pilot and co-pilot seats. And it looks like we're gonna start working on the fuselage. It looks like the starboard half. And we're gonna put where the pilot and the co-pilot are. We're gonna put that in the bombardier position as well. And we're gonna do one of the it looks like the ball socket uh, machine gun turret. And let's see. I'm not quite oh that's a little that's so it rotates, that's cool. That way there you can move it. Step eleven, you can see it going in. And a window. You see the landing gear in step 12. You see 13. You can see work on the other side of the fuselage or the port side. The tail piece or the tail section. And we bring the halves together. And you can see the tape to hold it in place. And we got the machine gun turret. I think that goes on top. Yep. And it shows you where not to glue, so we're able to rotate it. see the windshield or the glass section with the turret going on top. Man, I can't remember the last time I made a plane. I think it was a P-38 Lightning I made as a kid. And oh, by the way, I must apologize because recently I did a, the model. I showed you guys the model from uh, Ravel, and it was the Spitfire, the British Spitfire, the Iron Maiden Aces High Edition version. And I had said that I had never done a plane on a channel, and that was the first one where I apologize. I completely forgot about Jacques Cousteau's PBY. And I also did the history of Jacques Cousteau's PBY airplane. So this is the third model plane that I show you guys. You see step 21, the platform. 22, I believe that's for the landing gear. Or we'll see, I'm not sure. I want to say it's for the landing gear, but I don't know. Step 23 could be for the other side, where the wheel is going to mount. Again, I think it's the landing gear, but we'll find out when we get there. And again, the use of tape as we bring the wing halves together. The same for the other side in step 26. Let's see, step 27. You can see we're putting the wings onto the fuselage. And that wingspan was over 103 feet, so she's a big girl. 28. I believe those are the, the wings in the back near the tail section. 
29 the other side and we're putting them on the plane on the fuselage in step 30. Step 31 is all the stuff that's going to go together for the tail gunner. And step 32, working on the engines, or the size, where the motor mounts are. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. And this is cool. You actually get to take a look at the bombs that they use to drop. 34, 35, the formation of the, uh, I don't know what it's called, the bomb, the, the mount that holds the bomb in place. 36, we got the wheels and the tires for the landing gear. And 37, you can kind of see how everything is going to go on the bottom. The bombs. All right, let's see. We've got 38. This is the section that's going to be behind the propellers that's going to be um, cooling the engine. 39, you can see where you're not supposed to glue and where you are so that the propellers are actually able to spin. Now, I'm going to look into something for this model, guys. I had done the uh, magic scale modeling. I showed you guys the, the lights and the sounds for the 1200 scale version of the RMS Titanic, and that was just amazing. And I know they have a bomber kit, and I'm gonna check to see if it's for the B-17, if we could use it on the B-17, because each of the engines start up, and they start one at a time, and it's just amazing. So I'm gonna look into that. we can do that then this kit this build is going to be really really something special you can see all the fronts of the engines are going on the propellers and I don't know if those are machine guns that are onto the sides but we'll see and again the planes have rigging for the radios and we need a thread for that and I don't, I don't see that. I don't think that's included. All right. What do we got now? Now it looks like we put on all the decals. Beautiful. The Boeing B-17F-10BO Flying Fortress, the Memphis Bell, of the 324th Bomb Squadron, 91st Bomb Group, Bassingbourne, UK, May of 1943. And you can see the decals as well as the color schemes. When it comes to the color schemes, um, you can get some really nice pictures of the plane herself that was, she was fully restored, not to pristine condition. She was restored to the point where she was when she returned from the 25th mission. So she had, bullet holes and shrapnel and damage, but that was not repaired. But they have some awesome shots of the plane in the color schemes. So I'm gonna match this up with that and see how it fares. And let's see, this one is for the different one if you wanna make the different bomber. This is for the Boeing B-17F-55BO, the Flying Fortress of the 423rd Bomb Squadron, 306 Bomb Group at Thurley, UK, spring of 1943. And they're in different divisions. You can That's why you can tell there are different letters, numbers on the sides of the fuselage. Be interesting to look that plane up, but this is not the one we're going to do. 
Um, we got it for the Memphis Belle specifically. And I like to look down over here. You can see the information for the bombs, the colors, and it uh, looks like stickers go on it or decals. I don't know if they have that for the Memphis Bell or if that's for both. And that's everything. That's the instruction sheet. And this was released in 2008. So, all right, let's put that aside and get to this beautiful model kit. All right, let's... Last, get this beautiful plastic out. And look at that. Ah, I love it. You can see the beautiful, the riveting. This is going to look great with the airbrush. And maybe a wash, bring out some of the, some of the detail. You can see going towards the back and this huge tail fin or um, tail wing fin. I think the difference, because I, I, um, I don't know a lot about the bombers, but I think the difference between the B-17 and the B-24, like the Liberator, they had, the, the, this one has the really large fin in the back, the tail fin. Whereas the, the bomber, the B-24 Liberator, I think it had two smaller ones and a kind of like a, it was mounted with two fins to either side, where this one had the large one in the middle. But I could be mistaken, and I probably am. I just want to show you the detail on the model. I love it, look at that. Ravel does such a great job with all of these see where the turret's going to go on top and where the propellers are going to go the uh, fronts of the engines you can see the coils that are going to cool the engines love it and look you got the pilot and the co-pilot's uh, control stick I don't know if that's what it's called but and looks like we have the bombardier's platform for the front of the ship Beautiful. All right. Let's do this one first. It looks like we have all of the, the propellers. Love it. And I think these are what are, we're going to glue this behind the part. You're gonna, we're gonna just glue the top. Let me show you the back. It's gonna glue in there so we can still rotate them freely. Very nice. All right, and this is the other half. going to be a pretty big model too. All the way to that huge, beautiful tail fin. Again with the flap, and, and I know this isn't the rudder, I just don't know what to call it on a plane. And you can see where the pilot and the co-pilot are going to sit the beginnings of the control panels and we got the floor that's going to go with the front of the flight deck and let's see this as well I think this is the wall with the door yep right behind the seats and this could be the control panel could be but I'm not sure if it is it's pretty flat um, if that's where the decals are going to go, then it might not be impossible to drill out where the decals go, put the decal over it, and light the back. 
I just love lighting things. So <laughs> if there's a way to light it, I will do it. You can see for the landing gear. And this is for the, I think for the ball turret, machine gun brick turret on the bottom. And again, you can see we were gonna glue the top, but we're still gonna be able to rotate it freely. And you see the bottom of the door where they go in. Love it, look at the size of that. Huh? Beautiful, it's gonna be an absolutely spectacular kit, especially if we can get the uh, magic scale modeling extras. Okay, now we're gonna go into the Looks like all the clear parts to the plane. Look at that. So one of the problems right off the bat, and I and I'm I pretty much suck at this, but I'm gonna have to figure out how I can get good at doing the um the masking so we can paint this so it actually looks like there's separate windows and not just one lump of clear plastic. There's quite a few. See the front, the plane, all this would have to be masked so I can put in the, uh, the little frames. Same thing on the gun, the ball and socket. and the nose. You can see where the two machine guns are gonna come out the nose. And that's cool, because we'll be able to look in at the machine guns. And the bombardiers um, area of the plane. You can see that. That would have to be painted as well. And we have this section. I'm not sure where that's going to go. All right, that's going to be fun. Okay, and the last package in the model kit. Ooh, look at that. Looks like we have the wings that are going to go on the back, the tail section, on the sides. And look at this wing. This is a pretty good size. I mean, look at the size of my arm. So this model is going to be really, really big and fun. And remember, the larger the model, the easier it is to detail. You can see the, the wheels. make these look really fantastic. Again, they're so big, easier to work on. And then look at, we got all the machine guns. I think these are the ones that are gonna go into the bottom section with the rotating ball turret. Beautiful. I believe this is the port side. This is the top. You can see the flaps, the engines, the housings. And let's see, well, this could be the seat for the pilot and the co-pilot. And we get the mounting over here. I don't know if that's for more of the uh, landing gear and what these are, I'm not sure. The opening where the wheel, the landing gear is gonna go through, I'm not quite sure. Um, let's see, we've got, this looks like the bottom. This would be the bottom of what would probably be the starboard side. You can see where the landing gear is gonna come out at the bottom of the motor mount. And you can see the 
I think these are machine gun turret um, openings. I can't tell on the box. I don't know if those are for machine guns, but we'll see. And look at, you can see a couple of the bombs that are gonna go on the bottom. Can you see them in the illustration? No. You definitely don't want these dropped on you. It looks like we got a little, the little bombardier seat. It's going to go with the nose of the plane. We get some, uh, I think this is for the mounting of the bomb. And the last piece we got, it looks like the top of the starboard side wing. And you see the flaps in the back. The housings for the engines, where the propellers are going to go. And I think we found the instrument panel right here. You can see all the dials. I'm going to have to look to see if there are any pictures of the inside of the cockpit. It might be a little easier to go by and see if, um, I mean, if, if nothing was lit, then we just won't light it. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it anyway. I don't know if we'd be able to light the inside and be able to see it through the nose cone. You can see the front wheel, the landing gear. I think this is the fork, the, uh, the brace for it. And you can see the turret. I think this is what's going to go on top. And we got the fin that's going to go, well, the, the wing that's going to go at the aft end of the ship or plane. Beautiful. And that's it. That's everything that's included in this kit. So this is the B-17F Memphis Bell. This is Ravel. This is model kit 04297038. And this is going to be a really, really fun build. Again, if you want to check out the history that I did on the Memphis Bell, I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. And even all of the, I like doing history videos, and I actually did a playlist. So all of the videos that I've done the history on, whatever, if whether it's a plane or it's a ship, a battleship, an ocean liner, anything like that, they're all grouped together. So if you want to check them out, I appreciate it. And this is the Ravel kit. Until we start building this, I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys real soon.